Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about fresh release from Miniard. Of course it is made in 135 scale and it copies British Ori 3 tone uh, LG OCB type. As you can see now it comes with some new markings. So it might be an interesting build for this who would like to build a World War 1 truck in some unusual painting scheme. So here we have a commercial sample so it means you will get exactly the same stuff as what you'll see in this video review. We are going to open it and check what is hidden inside. First of all box size is standard. It's written here that we have PE parts included. There are three decal options and this is not a toy obviously. Then on the side we have some information about the manufacturer and some safety devices here. If we flip it over on the opposite side here you can notice three marking options which are included into this kit. They are quite colorful so even in 135 scale it should be um, I would say unusual build. This is a top opening box so let's open it. And here is what we have inside. So all frames are packed into the same plastic bag. Then on the bottom we have assembly manual, but we will check it a bit later. We are going to start with plastic parts first, of course. So just give me a second. Okay. I'm going to use scissors because as usual these plastic bags from Miniard they are sealed. So I have to cut through and open it. In the meantime I can remind you that you can support us financially, it is quite easy thing to do because we have special support button on our website and of course you will decide how much you will send us because it's done via PayPal. Okay, now I'm trying to open this plastic bag, okay, and then straight away we have another plastic bag, as you can see here we have clear plastic sprue together with decal sheet so just give me a second to open it and we will take a closer look at these decals there are two clear frames surprisingly so they carry different set of parts so let's zoom in so that you can see them here they are quite nice molding quality but as usual for mini art there are no masks included so if you would like to cover it somehow you have to cut your own masks and that's not such a easy thing to do for minor elements but still molding quality looks fine I will repeat it myself and I really like how clear parts look from Miniard. Next we continue with decals sheet so as you remember there are three marking options but decals sheet looks surprisingly big and I do not see any decals for the dashboard for example so I guess there are no interior decals on the external ones for example here you can see license plates but still printing quality looks fine because it comes from decograph so it should be easy to apply all these symbols on your vehicle. Next we continue with small envelopes so as you remember this kit packs um, P thread so that's where it is usually supplied it's not big P thread especially when compared with some tank kits from the same brand. But here we get all necessary parts for fine detailing and usually Mini RP is quite easy to handle so it's just a matter of careful installation and you will be good to go. Of course you have to use tweezers because otherwise it will be a quite a tricky thing to do. Here we continue with first gray plastic sprue. Let's zoom out a bit. Now you should be able to see it. So obviously here we get um, panels for the rear section and you can notice that we have wooden texture in molded into these parts. We also have some um, bars which will be supporting this rear section and seat pad. And we can zoom in back so that you can see what I'm talking about. Let's focus the camera. Yeah, now you should be able to see it. So that's the wooden texture. I think it will be even better looking part after some careful painting and weathering. So be ready to do it. Otherwise it would be strange to not to do it. Next we continue with this interconnection between frames. So I'm going to zoom out a bit. Now you should be able to see it. So here we have various minor elements for uh, interior and also engine parts. 
and everything looks fine but there are a lot of thin parts so be careful while handing them especially for example parts like this uh, they are really tricky to separate off the sprue I mean there is no point to hide it so be sure to use the plastic so do not use plastic cutters because then you have broken parts and it will be really tricky to fix them due to their thickness Okay. Next we continue with two absolutely identical plastic frames, so I will show you only one, there is no need to show the same again and again. So here we have wheel parts, so I am happy to see that we get plastic parts out of the box, there is no vinyl in this kit. We also have one piece wheel arches, as you can see they are pre-molded and pre-shaped. I would rather check them before purchase, if you have a chance to do so, because um, Due to the shipment issues or something else, you can get this broken off, not damaged, but broken off, but still it's better to check it, especially if you have such possibility. Here we have some parts for the drivetrain, and again a lot of small parts. Uh, Miniart is quite famous for attention for tiny details, so be ready for such things. They are not possible to install without tweezers, and I mean, it's obvious, but some others still try to do it with their bare fingers. Here we continue with plastic sprue dedicated to front cap parts. And these are just simple panels, as you remember there were no doors or something else, so it's just a matter of combining them together. We have no internal detailing here, it's just plain panels, so it might be a good idea to play with some weathering on these parts, maybe to replicate some uh, paint, weathering, maybe something else, it will be up to you. Next we continue with two identical plastic frames, again we are going to check only one. Now, uh, So here we have storage box and also frame bar here, everything looks fine, even these tiny bits are molded carefully, there is no flesh on them, oops, and that's really surprising that this box is pre-molded as an almost single piece part, what should make it easier to install it on your vehicle. Next we continue with another plastic sprue, so here we have various walls for, I guess, for these boxes, but we will check assembly menu in order to be sure, and here you can see these parts from the opposite side, so they are detailed from both sides. Okay, and next we have last grey plastic sprue, it is actually the biggest one in this kit, it defines the size of the box in this kit. So here we have mix of various parts, for example chassis bars which are molded as large pieces, here we have engine and drivetrain parts, wheel axles, leaf springs, radiator grill here, also some parts for the front cap, and if we zoom in so that you can check all parts in detail. So here you can notice that there are a lot of pre-molded details, rivets, also some panel lines, everything is carefully copied. So maybe with some weathering added they will be brought out and they will be visible on the finished model. Now in grey plastic they are not that evident, so that's why I always recommend to try to do some weathering at least minimum of possible things on this part so that it would be possible to see what is actually pre-molded in this kit. And now we can move on to the last bonus in this kit, let's say, or component of this kit. As you can see, that's assembly manual, which is printed in form of large color printed brochure. And here we have first marking option, which comes from London 1918. Next we continue with parts map and paint chart. Here again parts map and assembly process starts with engine. And this power plant should be quite detailed here, so if you want to open the bonnet or you think through how to expose it, it would be worth to play with some uh, wiring on this vehicle, on this engine and replicate it, because here for example as you can see it is shown that you have to use metal wire in order to replicate some ignition wires. And here we continue with main chassis or leaf springs. Next we use plastic part which is installed on the drivetrain as far as you can see. Here we continue with front cap, radiator grill which is built out of several parts surprisingly. And next we continue with this levers, 
I'm not sure what they will be used for. I guess these are just suspension arms. Here we continue with wheel assembly. Next we have also P parts installation on the chassis. So it's the chassis numbers. Next here we install various control elements, exhaust tube, also some of the additional accessories in the cap. And front cap which is assembled out of several panels as you remember. Next we work on the rear section. And again a lot of small bits as you can see will be installed here and there so be ready for this, don't miss this part of the fun. And here we install wheel arches on the front section, then wheels go onto the uh, designated spot. And that's really good because we are not forced by assembly manual to install wheels in the middle of assembly. It's actually the sequence which is usually followed by almost every modeler. And here we have another marking option, it comes from London 1918-1922. And one more here, Liverpool early 20s, quite an interesting green color. So as I said, this kit should be already available in all good model shops. Modelium X has it for sure, so you can order it there. Of course, I will be happy to hear your opinion about this kit here in the comment section below. If you like this video, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I will see you in the next video review as usual. Thank you for joining me today and bye!